I don't think I have ever in my life heard Bishop Jake say something so erroneous. Now, Bishop Jakes, have you been rejected from a loan lately? Bishop Jakes, I'm disappointed. What part of work from home is against the fruit of the spirit? Y'all don't want me to preach the truth. No, we do want you to preach the truth. <laughs> we don't want you preaching this. We're the only country that's having a fight about going back to work. Go to Italy, go to Rome, go to Japan, go anywhere else. We're the only people. So let me get this straight. We're talking about Americans not wanting to go back to the office. They want to work from home. Now he's calling it going back to work as if Americans are not wanting to work. Americans don't want to work from the office. They want to work from home. And he got some beef about it. Because we are more interested in our convenience than our productivity. I'm sorry, y'all. I hate when commentators stop and start, but can we talk about this real quick? Employers for years figuratively raped and plummeted. I think it's real tone deaf that now that employees have found a better way to do it, they're being lazy. Never mind the fact that you have brought about the biggest calamity in the history of America with real estate as all industrial business uh, businesses and offices are being shut down. T.D. Jakes, why the hell we care? Excuse me, Daddy. Why the heck we care? Why does the everyday nine to five American worker care that these commercial buildings are being foreclosed on? Now, I got a, I got a thought about this that I'm going to share with you all on why T.D. Jakes is upset and using preaching time to talk about the downfall of commercials buildings. These CEOs get millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. They could not see in the future, so now we're responsible for the collapse of commercial buildings? Now, Bishop Jakes. And the reason you can't get a bank loan is that the feds have demanded that the banks reserve enough money to eat up the buildings that you won't go in. Oh. Now, Bishop Jakes, have you been rejected from a loan lately? Did your business plans or something you had going on not work because the banks don't have as much capital as they should because of these defaulted loans on these commercial buildings? And now you're literally saying that the, the companies that purchased the bill, now watch this, the companies that they signed the lease, they signed the mortgages, they, were, they stood to make millions off of these buildings, are now foreclosing and defaulting on the loans, and now it's our fault? Can somebody tell me how this makes sense? Unless Jake's plans are being hindered and now he wants to go and spew that on us. Because what, what part of work from home is against the fruit of the spirit? I can see if he was preaching, now that you guys are working from home, make sure you work in integrity. That makes sense. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Make sure you're not cheating the clock and playing around. That makes perfect sense. But to blame employees for the collapse of commercial buildings because employees are demanding not to come back to the office sounds like some personal interest has leaked into his professional space ministering to the people of God. But as long as you can walk around in your jammies and make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you don't care that people can't buy houses, that cities are having to rearrange the entire city plan to commit themselves to your convenience. We don't care. <laughs> every, every decision you make affects other people. What, where was this preaching at and fussing at? Minimum wage has not gone off up in years. Is that our fault too? It's a sloppy message. And I, I ain't got no beef with Jakes, but this is a sloppy message. It is not fair to the parishioners. Now them dingleberries up there in the stage. And of course, they're like, I'll preach, Bishop, preach, because common sense has left the building. But as someone who has had a very interesting day to day, who decided to go to his computer and watch this thinking, how is he preaching this? I hope some of y'all disagree with me because I, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. But let's see. Y'all don't want me to preach the truth. No, no, no. We do want you to preach the truth. <laughs> no, we really, we really do want you to preach the truth. We don't want you preaching this. Y'all can't handle the truth. No, we can. This ain't the truth, though. <laughs> Y'all can't handle it. And yet you are the greatest nation in the world. And yet you're the only nation that won't go back to work. We are going back to work from home, Bishop. Teachers won't go back to teaching. Sir, teachers have to be armed with guns that they can't bring on the campus because Republicans won't 
pass healthy gun laws. Teachers have to spend their whole month's salary on supplies because the budgets keep on getting cut. You, uh-oh, don't do it. This is irresponsible. Teachers are basically having to do part. I went to Kohl's a couple of days ago and a teacher was telling one of the cu customers that she won't be around too much longer because school is about to start again. Teachers can't even have off on the summertime because teachers are not being paid enough and you're telling me that it's the teacher's fault? There's a shortage of nurses in the hospital. There's a crisis in this country. Because the nurses got burnt out during COVID. They walked away. Because we love convenience more than purpose. He sounds like a Republican. He sounds like someone who has millions at stakes for a business venture and now blaming the people because his millions is about to get messed up because the trendsetters didn't see the trend. So let them get sick and die. Let them grow up and can't read. We used to be the envy of the world academically. Number one in education, now we're number 25. Why are you not taking this message to the mayor and the county, the county rather, who keeps cutting the education budget? Do y'all see this man literally blaming the parishioners for this? We had more marriages in slavery. Women did not have rights in slavery. Women at one time couldn't own a bank account. Of course there were more marriages back then than there are now because women don't need men anymore. Bishop Jakes, I'm disappointed. No, this is a fact, check me, fact check me. We don't care if you're right, you're still wrong. Fact check me, we had more marriages in slavery than we do now, we're down to about 32%. When I was young, it was 50 something. And we were shot this 32% because everybody is so selfish. Hold on, because people are not getting married anymore. That means they're selfish. Anything that requires compromise, we run from it. Anything that requires inconvenience. Now, here's what preachers do. And I got a bad habit of doing this sometime, too. You get upset about something, you go to fussing. Then you get back on topic with a principle that's true. Just because you're right don't mean you're not wrong. Because this younger, the generate, my generation and the younger will run from anything that's uncomfortable. But that does not excuse this very selfish, self-centered, closed-minded, message that he preached to these people. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. That's so unfair. No, no, I want, I want people to be themselves. And the whole national economy is riveted by the decision. The national economy, I want y'all to please make sense of this, y'all. I, I hope y'all are hearing this. The national economy is riveted because people want to be themselves. I don't think I have ever in my life heard Bishop Jake say something so erroneous, so wrong, so upside down and lopsided as I've heard this message here. This would be my first time ever publicly saying anything anti Thomas Dexter Jakes. And I'm just, I just can't believe. Is he okay? Is the church losing money? Something's going on. Now all the buildings are shutting down and the banks are prepared to gobble up the debt because the leases are up and the loans are due. And it's also you can stay at home with Boo Boo and make hot bologna sandwiches and watch Days of Our Lives. This man's real estate investments must be taking a hit. There are three things. Watch this, guys. I don't care how anointed your man of God is. There are three things that's going to move this, that man. Power, money, or sex. They can prophesy, woman of God too, speak in tongues, call down fire. But power, money, and sex will trip them up. So when I'm watching something that's off, I'm looking for the top three. Is this about power? Is this about money? Or is this about sex? And clearly, this is about money. He's losing money, and he found out why, and he decided to go off on Sunday.